Back as tensions soar in the Middle East, the Iranian Navy has deployed a warship to the Red Sea. This movement comes just a few days after the U.S. military sank three boats belonging to the Houthis. The Houthis are an Iranian-backed group from Yemen who have been targeting commercial vessels in the Red Sea. Let's bring in CNN's Natasha Bertrand, who is following all of this for us from the Pentagon. So, Natasha, how is the Pentagon responding to this? Well, Rahel, a defense official tells us that they are monitoring the situation closely, of course, because it comes amid all of the rising tensions in the Red Sea with the Houthis, which are an Iran-backed group. Iran does provide support and intelligence to the Houthis, according to the White House. And so the U.S. is monitoring this very closely. However, it is important to note that this is not the first time that Iran has deployed assets to the Red Sea. They operate there pretty regularly. But the U.S., of course, is eyeing this because of the fact that they say that Iran Iran has been providing the Houthis with the kind of maritime intelligence that they need to select targets uh, in the Red Sea as they com uh, hit commercial vessels there. There have been uh, over 100 attacks by these Iran-backed Houthi militants on commercial vessels in the Red Sea uh, since uh, really in the last uh, month, month and a half. And so the uptick that we have seen is really remarkable, and it has really ensnared international shipping and commerce. The fact that Iran is now there uh, just a day or two after the U.S. Uh, shot, uh, sh uh, fired on small boats that contained Houthi militants, sinking them and killing all of those Houthi militants on board could be seen uh, as a sign that Iran is trying to present a show of force uh, to the Americans, of course, who are operating in the area. Because if you'll recall, the U.S. also set up a multinational maritime task force to bolster security in the Red Sea to try to prevent the Houthis uh, from launching these attacks and to escort uh, vessels that are transiting the area so that they feel safe uh, going up and through the Suez Canal so that international shipping can kind of get back on track here. So this is not right now being seen by the Pentagon as a direct threat to the U.S. or any of its allies. Instead, they are watching it very closely. They do not necessarily think that Iran is going to conduct any kind of provocations here, but both sides obviously trying to send a message to the other there that they are in the region. They can respond if and when they deem it is necessary for help. Yeah, with huge implications that that region is uh, that channels an area of 12 percent of global commerce travels through. So it has huge implications. Natasha Bertrand, live force there at the Pentagon. Natasha, thank you. All right. Yeah. Joining us now, CNN military analyst, former NATO Supreme Ally Commander General Wesley Clark. General, this is the Iranian naval vessel that is being deployed. I can show you where it's going. It's going in the Red Sea, particularly down in this area right here where there's been a lot of activity the last several days. What does the presence of this Iranian vessel change? So it is, uh, first of all, it's going to collect intelligence on U.S. activities in the area. It's going to serve as a deterrent, <clears throat> or they believe it'll deter, U.S. actions against the Houthis. It will certainly inhibit us in the sense of maneuvering. It, it's one more factor for us to consider. It, it raises tensions in the region. It shows Iran's hegemonial aspirations, demonstrates those. And uh, we'll just have to see where this goes, John. Um, if the Houthis say, okay, we got the Iranians here, now we're not gonna interfere with the shipping, fine. <clears throat> if the Houthis say, now we got the Iranians here, we can do more to interdict the shipping, Iran has got to get its destroyer out of the way as we protect the shipping. If that destroyer gets in the way, if it interferes with the shipping, if it supports the Houthis, then that is a challenge that will have to be met by the United yeah. States militarily. We'll have to watch this develop over the next several days. Let's talk about what's happening in Ukraine because Russia has continued its air assault on this nation, including the capital of Kyiv, where we have seen destruction inside the capital city. Now, it's believed that these attacks carried out with a number of different types of weapons, but one thing that the Russians are using are these airborne hypersonic missiles, uh, which can deliver quite a blow, uh, certainly to civilian areas here. Talk to us about what these weapons and the fact that Russia is using them. Well, first of all, these weapons can be shot down by Patriot uh, missiles, but the Russians are using them in combination with other uh, devices, with ballistic missiles, with uh, the Iranian-supplied drones and other things, and they're coming in such a way from such directions as to basically overwhelm the Ukrainians' defense management system. If you could get the Patriots in the right position, if you could cue them at the right time, uh, they could stop these missiles. But there aren't enough Patriots to handle all of the 
requirements there. So this is an ongoing struggle. Uh, it's going to cause a lot of pain and grief in Ukraine and the United States and the West have, have got to provide the assets, more assets to enable Ukraine to, to handle this. And that's very difficult because we're not producing and we don't have any excess Patriot batteries right now. As long as we're talking about air power, we've learned now that since this latest round of air attacks from Russia began, the Poles have said in Poland, they've said that some of the missiles have flown over Polish airspace and now Poland says it's going to deploy some of its warplanes over its country in its own defense. Is this posturing general? What's going on here? I think it is posturing. I think it's a political move by the government in Warsaw. Uh, I don't think that the Russians uh, intend to strike Poland. Uh, that's an entirely uh, different scenario if they were to do that. But on the other hand, Poland is showing its concern and it's showing its concern not only to its domestic population, but to the other members of NATO and particularly to Germany, France and the United States. It's part of Europe asking the United States to lead, do more, get reinforcement uh, equipment to Ukraine, help Ukraine fight Russia in Ukraine. It's all part of the diplomatic signaling going on right now. General Wesley Clark, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being with us today. Happy New Year.